Hey, this is Russ. Yeah, riding season's right around the corner from us. <laughs> I think by next week I should be able to get out and do some e-bike reviews. Yeah, stay tuned for this coming week. Yeah. Now, I was thinking about this and I said, you know, last year I was riding the Magicycle Deer 26 inch, uh, you know, the big green bike. Yeah, and uh, yeah, I, I was a distance away from home and I, I ran over a, um, a roofing nail. You know, of the things that get you, it's usually a nail. I don't know why that is. Even car tires, you know, when you get a flat, it's usually a roofing nail <laughs> that does that. So anyway, uh, I was thinking, had I had tools with me, because I didn't have it with me, Mrs. Wright had to pick me up. Um, had I had tools with me, could I have fixed that flat when I was out, outside and out there? The more I thought about it, and I thought, yeah, probably not. And here's why. It was on the rear tire. Now, to fix that flat, I had to take the tire off, you know, get it out. Everyone hates a rear flat tire. That's worse than the front, right? I would have to take that off. Um, I would have had to have had um, tire levers with me, and I had, to, I had to buy special ones. I had to buy really heavy-duty um, um, steel ones to do it. I, you know, I had these, these plastic ones, but not enough to take the tire off on that bike. So um, I wouldn't have been able to do it. And even at home when I did it, it took me a couple hours to do it because it wasn't that easy to take the tire off of the rim. That, that, that bike, I don't know what it is, but... Getting those uh, Kenda tires off of there, man, that was murder. So, yeah, and it was like 90 plus degrees outside. Now, how am I going to do this for a couple of hours outside in a 90 degree weather, sitting on the ground <laughs> and trying to deal with it? I don't think I could have done it. So, what a lot of people do is they try to get things like, um, like Tannis Armor liners on their tires, or they'll put stuff like, um, like slime or flat out in their tires. Now, had the tires had the slime, would it have solved the problem? Maybe, maybe not, you know, but, uh, you know, you put this stuff in and what happens is it coats the, the inside of your inner tube. And so when the flat happens, it starts spitting this stuff out through the hole and this stuff will seal up the hole. That's the theory behind it. Now, a lot of people say the slime doesn't work as well as flat out. So, you know, whichever brand, whichever thing you like, there's tire, um, I don't know what they call this stuff, tire, tire tube sealants, okay, that you can put in your tires. Now, I don't have them in any of my current bikes. I, I put some of this stuff before in my first bike, which was the Rad Rover 5, and I haven't put any in anything else because there's too many bikes coming in. I would have to put it in a lot of bikes. But I had a uh, little more than half of a bottle left. So here's what I could have done. I could have had this. I, if I had this with me and got the flat, I could have probably put this in there, you know, while the tire was flat, and then uh, pumped up the tire and see if it will seal it, because it might, right? So here's one thing that I try to carry with me now, too, in my tool bag is this stuff. I mean, it's, it's not going to go in any other tire. I might as well carry it with me. <laughs> and then uh, whatever bike I take with me, I might have a possibility of fixing it. Now, if it doesn't fix it, I'm no better off anyways. It doesn't take that long to put this inside the tire. You just unscrew the uh, the little, um, I don't know, the valve that's in the inner tube. To unscrew it. Make sure you bring something to unscrew it. They do give you a, a cap that helps unscrew it, but get a better unscrewing thing, all right? This is plastic. Sometimes those things are on tight. So um, better to try it than nothing, all right? Now, you're going to need something like an air pump. Let me show you this. Oops, dropping the slime there. So this is the pump that I've been uh, recommending to a lot of people uh, over the years. Let me see if I turn this thing on here. All right, <laughs> here we go. It's on. They give you these uh, these little things you attach to it. You just kind of screw it in there. Now, on the end of this, you might notice this this gold thing. This is a an adapter that I keep on here. I don't use it unless I need it. But this is a um, press the valve adapter. Okay. Uh, but usually at the end of these things is this typical Schrader valve, which is on most of our tires. But certain tires, like, for instance, I think it was the um, Magicycle commuter bike and also the, um, the Area 13 Blackbird. They both had tires that are inner tubes that required press the valve um, adapters to go on here before I can actually use it. So I keep it with it just in case. So after you put the slime in, you... Uh, 
Pump it up, yeah, it's pretty loud. <laughs> pump it up with the pump. Carry this with you, make sure it's all, uh, it's all uh, charged up and ready to go. And fat tire bikes, I usually put about 20 pounds of pressure. You put in whatever you feel like, but that's what I put in. And um, if it holds it, that's great. If it doesn't, I'm no better off, right? Now, if you were to try to fix the flat, let's say you had a flat in the front tire, okay? Now, if you don't carry an extra inner tube, an alternative is to carry something like this. This is made by Park Tools, but there's other, other companies that make these things. This is a inner tube repair kit. So what this has is it's got a little bit of glue, okay? It's got a, uh, a piece of um, sandpaper. <laughs> we'll talk about that in a second. Then it's got these patches, all right? This is a just a circular one. Here's another one that's uh, uh, a little bit longer. Let me see if we get this out here. A little bit longer patch. So the whole point of this is trying to fix the inner tube with a patch rather than having to uh, replace the entire inner tube. So what, what you're supposed to do is you, uh, you take the sandpaper. You sandpaper down a little bit of the um, inner tube because the inner tube usually has it's almost like a powder coating on it sometimes. But you sand that stuff down so you get a good adhesion when you put the, the patch with the cement on there. And then you, uh, you wait a while and then you pump up some air and put the tire back into the, uh, in, you know, put the inner tube back in the tire and put the tire back onto the bike. And away you go. If everything works, then you're good. You got a patched tire, uh, patched inner tube. If it doesn't work, then you're gonna need to uh, change out the inner tube. Now you could carry an inner tube with you, but you know how big the box is for <laughs> a 26 by four inch fat tire inner tube? It's, it's pretty big. Yeah, I have some at home, but um, a lot of people don't wanna carry that big of a thing with them. So, you know, uh, a patch kit might be good. But again, you know, if you're, if you're out in the hot sun, you know, like I said, if, you, if, if the rear tire was there, and it went bad and they and it was in the hot sun because it was like 90 degrees out that day um it took me two hours to fix that rear tire <laughs> and i was at home okay to do it who's going to be able to sit outside in the hot sun for two hours sit on the sidewalk which is already hot and try to fix that tire i don't think that's going to be realistic yeah so if these if these things don't solve the problem you're going to need to call for help that's that's my thinking okay now, what other things should you bring, okay? Bring with you all the time a couple of these things. Now, the, these are hex drivers, right? This is a, uh, a four millimeter and a five millimeter. You'll find that on your e-bikes, these two will usually fix everything, all right? Now, they, they have smaller um, uh, screws and they have uh, bigger ones too, but the vast majority of the ones that they use are either four millimeter or five millimeter. So if you're gonna carry something, this would be it. If, if you don't carry that, try carrying one of these. You guys have seen these type of things before, right? You know, you know it comes <laughs> with a whole bunch of different ones. These are good for portable, but it's kind of a hassle to kind of turn these. Have you guys tried to use these before? But this has everything on here. I think they have it from two millimeter on up to six millimeters. So now here's the thing, six millimeters are usually needed for, um, for adjustments of your, um, your seat posts and the like. <laughs> so I actually have one of these things, but in six millimeter, actually I have it all the way through from two to six millimeters. But if you had to carry the least amount of them, four millimeter and five millimeters will take care of most of the things you, you need to do, all right? Small ones might need to, to, to do stuff like uh, your display screens or you know anything else that are smaller screws, but chances of something like that, like that going wrong on the road is kind of slim, right? So carry at least a four or and a five millimeter, okay? Um, oh, one more thing, bring, bring a knife with you too. <laughs> Sometimes you might need that for certain odds and end things. It's always good to have a knife with you, carry a portable knife with you. Uh, sometimes you might want to also carry um, zip ties because you, again, you might have to, to get to certain things. You might have to cut off some zip ties to, you know, to, uh, to, to move some wires and cables around, but then you might want to zip tie it back and then you'll need something to cut that, that zip tie. Okay. So these are the things that I think are probably the most necessary things to carry with you 
in the event that something happens while you're out on the road. Now, you really should carry more. Now, I, I did a video before of all the different things in my tool bag. I'll put a link to that for you so that you can see that video again. That's more complete, but these are the things that I think are bare minimum things you should probably carry with you when you're out on the road. <laughs> Good luck, too. If something happens, you know, nobody wants to have some type of failure of their bike while they're out on the road, but it does happen. Yeah, very well happens. Look through your tool bags uh, now before you get out on, your, on the road um, for the season. And then, of course, like I mentioned in the past, check your bike over really good before you go out the very first time. You know, pump up the air in the tires because it's probably going to be low. Um, make sure you have a full battery charge and ready to go. You don't want to be short of batteries. Oh, one more thing that you might want to do. I was just kind of thinking at the top of my head here. Um, I used to carry um, a USB cable that goes to my iPhone, okay? Um, because on some of my bikes, I have a, a USB port uh, that you comes, usually comes off of the display screen somewhere on there, if it has it. Um, and then I would plug my my uh, phone into that USB charger. Now, the reason that that's important is because a lot of times I might use like a, the GPS map to kind of guide myself to get to where I wanted to get to because I was going far that day when I had that flat. Um, it tends to drain your battery on your bike, uh, on your bike, <laughs> on your phone, okay? It tends to drain your phone out when you're using the GPS constantly. And at that time, I still had my old iPhone. It was a, actually, it's a really old one. It's an iPhone 6S Plus. I've been using that phone forever. Now I use the iPhone 15 uh, Pro Max. And the battery on that thing is a lot longer. <laughs> I mean, I used to charge my iPhone 6S Plus like three times a day just to get a charge on that thing. But uh, the 15 Pro Max, I can go like two days and never charge it. The battery management's better and the batteries are better on it. But... Let's say you have an older phone like I had, all right? Uh, having that USB cable with me to keep the phone charged up while it's running is kind of important because when I, when I had the flat, I said, you know, I've got to make a call to Mrs. Wright. I got to get picked up. I found that the battery on my phone had died all the way down. I think I had like 10% left or something like that. I said, I have enough to probably just make a call and that's about it before this phone dies on me. So if your bike has a USB port on it, bring the cable for your phone. You never can tell, especially if you use your map system all day long. So anyway, it's just an extra thing I thought about, you know, bring it along with you. And, you know, it doesn't hurt to keep it charged up while you're riding, too, especially if you're running that map, because it just continuously drains that, that, uh, that phone battery. You want to have enough power to make an emergency phone call, right? Worst thing is, is you don't have your phone with you and you can't call anybody and you get a flat. So some things to consider. Anyways, I hope this has been helpful for you. Take a look at that other video. I'll put the link in the description of the video of the more complete uh, video about what's in my tool bag. If you like this video, go ahead and hit the like button, hit the subscribe button. I'll talk to you guys next time.